I'm Akash Singh Raptor. I'm speaking about my new book, Indian Political Theory, laying the groundwork for Swaraj. Whenever I speak to people about Indian political theory, one of the first questions people ask me is, is there Indian political theory? And this is an important question. It also tells you why I wrote this book, because we've had a very vibrant tradition in India of developing original political thought, negotiating between uh, dominant Western ideas of political thought, for example, in the liberal Rawlsian tradition or in the continental tradition represented by Habermas or more lately Zizek. But we never hear about what's going on within the uh, internal developments in India. So I wrote this book as a comprehensive guide to political theory in contemporary India. When we do hear about Indian political theory, we generally hear it referred to as Indian political thought. Back in 2010, I edited a volume uh, for Rutledge entitled Indian political thought, a reader, where in some respects I attempted to prove to people or justify the notion that we have been cultivating an indigenous um, uh, history of political thought in India since independence. We always speak about Indian political thought going up to the era of independence. You'll hear about the freedom fighters, the nationalists, you'll even hear included into this great intellectuals and activists like Gandhi or Ambedkar. But very rarely do you hear about Indian political thought in the contemporary moment. I wrote Indian political theory to deal specifically with the way that Indians are theorizing their political realities and engaging and debating with one another at the theoretical level right now. In the experiences that have been emerging uh, in the last 30 years or so, and I address the contemporary theoretical uh, horizon of Indian scholarship one by one, working through a number of the authors, trying to lay out what are the developments in political theory since uh, about the 1970s and 80s, what is the direction it has been evolving in, what are the hindrances it's faced in order to publicize itself, in order to grow, in order to spread, and finally, the most important part of this book, what is the future of Indian political theory? Students and researchers in Indian politics or in political theory as such find that when they're studying Indian politics, all of the theoretical frameworks come from outside of Indian thought. They come from basically Western theoretical models. Political theorists in India also find that they are not reading about political theorists working in India. I wrote Indian political theory for the students of political science, the students of philosophy, students of social theory, sociology, anthropology, and law, to finally be able to start to theorize political realities, social realities, the realities we study in political science, from the point of view of theory generated in, by, and about Indian scholars. Indian political theory should be of use to any students or researchers who want to find new, innovative ways to study political realities and who feel the need or the demand to reconceptualize these realities, not according to frameworks developed elsewhere, but according to frameworks developed in India itself by Indian theorists. Indian political theory should be of use to any students and scholars who are trying to understand political philosophy, political theory in India from an Indian perspective, rather than being informed what India ought to be from an external perspective, let's say from a liberal model or a Habermasian model. Indian political theory attempts to reinterpret Indian political re realities and the recent history of theory in India in a way that allows for what I refer to as Swaraj in ideas. And this is why the subtitle of Indian political theory is laying the groundwork for Swaraj. But my experience with Rutledge, like any scholar around the world, has been since the very moment that I started conducting serious research. I can remember one of the first times I heard the word 
Rutledge, I was reading a book by Gayatri Spivak, which had a great impact on me. And when I realized that she had published with Rutledge, and I think this was 20 or 30 years ago, I decided I will publish with Rutledge as well. Since 2010, I've been doing so, quite deeply involved, uh, both with um, edited volumes. In 2010, I published Indian Political Thought, a reader, and with authored volumes. And just recently, in the last few weeks, I've published Indian Political Theory, um, uh, also uh, on the same subject, but the way I've reconceived it since 2010. And in the meantime, I've been a series editor for a very vibrant series, Ethics, Human Rights, and Global Political Thought. And we bring out volume after volume in the newest um, uh, scholarship in this, um, this discipline, um, somewhere between ethics and global politics. My engagement with Rutledge has always been uh, uh, up to every standard that I can expect from a publisher. They're prompt, they're communicative, they're transparent, and they're extremely professional. I've published books with many other publishers, um, but I've always found that publishing with Rutledge is the most seamless experience and generally turns out the most uh, beautifully uh, uh, produced volume. 